back to it. Uh, I know for me it was important during that break to stretch a little bit. I've been sitting at the computer all day. Um, okay, so here's another combustion analysis problem. This is about as complicated as they get. Uh, we have, again, we have an unknown powder. It's been found at a crime scene. This is your uh, job to identify the chemical formula for the substance and its common or generic name. Preliminary tests reveal that the possible, possible elements are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And a combustion analysis using the apparatus schematically pictured below. Um, and I'm, by below, I mean from the previous slide that we did in this lecture. Has the following results. Sample size of 1.8 grams produces this many grams of carbon dioxide and this many grams of H2O. A separate analysis to determine the amount of nitrogen in the compound as ammonia found that in a 0.5 gram sample there were 0.0182 grams of ammonia. Finally, the molar mass was found to be 468 and uh, this is actually all of the information we need for this. Uh, the only thing we have left is to actually do the work. And I guess I'll, I'll start the work on this page. Now, um, this part of the problem up here is exactly like what we just did. We're going to take the grams of carbon dioxide, turn them into moles, and so let me do that part first. So. Uh, 4.9127 grams of carbon dioxide. Use the molar mass of 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide for one mole. And in one mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon. Let me set up the H2O. 1.4219 grams of H2O, 18.02. And so this is exactly what you just did on the previous problem. Uh, and I should say moles of H2O. And in one mole of H2O, there are two moles of hydrogen. All right, so let's multiply this out. 4.9127 divided by 44.01, 0 0.11. And with all these significant figures in here, I am gonna keep four significant figures for this problem. And I'm going to write 0 0.1116 moles of carbon. And I'm going to multiply that times 12.01 and get 1.340 grams of carbon. So to get this bottom number, I took the top one times 12.01 grams per mole in carbon to get the bottom number. Now let's multiply uh, or do the math for this bottom one. 1.4219 divided by, I'll show that, divided by 18.02 times 2, 0 0.1578. moles of hydrogen and then 0.1578 times 1.008 for hydrogen grams per mole of hydrogen 0 0.1591 grams of hydrogen all right now in the last problem where there was only carbon hydrogen and oxygen we would then take our sample size, subtract off our grams of carbon, subtract off our grams of hydrogen, and we'd be left with oxygen. But we can't do that yet because there's also nitrogen. To do nitrogen, we will need to do two things, and that's why I'm going to move this up 
Let's see. We'll keep that there. And um, we'll now do the work on the next page. See how there's a different sample size for the nitrogen? The first thing we want to do is we want to get the grams of ammonia on the same number of um, same sample size as the 1.8 grams. So like this, this ammonia is in 0.5 grams. To compare it to the carbon dioxide and the H2O, we need to get the amount of ammonia on, in 1.8 gram size sample. To do that, we use what's called a scaling factor. And a scaling factor just says this. If there are 0 0.0182 grams of ammonia, per 0.5000 grams of sample. How many grams of ammonia will there be in a 1.8 gram sample? And I'll write 1.8000 gram sample here. because that'll make the grams of ammonia to be able to be compared to the calculations we've already done. And uh, to solve this, uh, I would uh, usually do a cross multiplication. The 0 0.0182 times 1.8 equals X times 0.5. And when I do that, so 0 0.0182 times 1.8, divided by 0.5, I get 0 0.0655 grams of ammonia. And that makes sense. So the sample size for 1.8 grams is about three times bigger, you know, a little more than three times bigger. And so my grams of ammonia should be a little more than three times bigger, and certainly bigger, which it is. So. I'm hopeful that my calculator and my work was okay. Now I'm going to find the grams of nitrogen in my ammonia. And I'm going to do it just like I did for the grams of carbon dioxide. I'm going to do the molar mass of ammonia and then so 0 0.0655 grams of ammonia. There are 17.03 grams of ammonia per mole. And in one mole of ammonia, there's one mole of nitrogen. Point oh six five five divided by 17.03, 0 0.003846. And those are moles of nitrogen, and we still need grams of nitrogen. So we use the molar mass of nitrogen, 14.01. Zero point zero five three nine grams of nitrogen. Okay, so let me recap what we just did. So we know grams and moles of carbon and hydrogen on a one point eight gram sample size. We converted our nitrogen sample to a one point eight gram sample, and then found the moles and grams of nitrogen in that sample. Two more things to do. The next one is find oxygen by subtraction. Meaning we now know that the 1.8 gram sample has a certain amount of grams of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, so let's subtract them.
take your sample, subtract 1.340 grams carbon, subtract 0 0.1591, grams of hydrogen, subtract 0 0.0539 grams of nitrogen. And whatever's left is my oxygen. One point eight minus 1.340 minus 0 0.1591 minus 0 0.0539, 0 0.247. Grams of oxygen, let's see if that makes sense. 1.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0 0.55, yeah, that makes sense. Find our moles of oxygen, then we'll be able to gather everything up. Zero point zero one five four four moles of oxygen. All right. So here we go. Uh, just like the last problem, I'm going to get organized. I'm going to write C zero point one 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 six H zero point one five seven eight. I'm going to do N next zero point zero zero three eight four six. O, 0 0.01544. You'd never think it'd work out, would you? But uh, I, let's see. Next, the moles of nitrogen are my smallest number. Divide everything by that. And I think oh, I've sort of okay. run out of space, but... For the, the method that you're showing us, do you prefer it the most that we use? Good question. Um, so the method I'm showing you is... I, I, what, it is my favorite method. Um, yes, it's how I work the problems, um, but I would say um, it makes the most sense to me. Uh, but do you have to use it? No. Yeah, because all so I mean all this stuff like think of it as I'm going to show you the entire process, and you get to figure out how you can do it for yourself. All right, so now let's multiply this out. So uh, C H N O. I know my N is going to be one. 0.1116 divided by 0 0.003846. I get 29.02. That's going to be 29. Now I'll show my hydrogen here and see if I can get my calculator. 0.1578 divided by 0 0.003846. 41.03. That's going to be 41. 0.01544 divided by 0 0.003846, 4.01, so that's going to be a 4. So yes, even though the numbers looked very strange, we did get a small whole number ratio for our empirical formula. And in the space that's up here, I will then, well, let's see, if I take this and figure out what the molar mass is, it would be 29 times 12.01 plus 41 times 1.008 plus 14.01 plus 4 times 16 
and I get a molar mass of this of 468 grams per mole. And in the problem statement, it said that the molar mass was 468 grams per mole. And so what that tells us is that this is also the molecular formula. And in fact, we are done. I didn't have to use my uh, top corner there. So that problem is done. And since it's not at the bottom, I would typically put some sort of weird shape around it to let you know that it was my final.